Ben Bradley. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, I've already put my first page at the back, which is helpful. Uh, it's a pleasure to take part in today's debate on a topic I haven't shied away from uh, in the public discourse already. In fact, I find myself or found myself in the middle of a, the usual Twitter storm, not for the first time, uh, when I tried to cut across uh, the predictable hysteria that came from the announcement of this privatisation, uh, the accusations from opposition benches that this decision was fascism in action. Uh, which is something of a ridiculous statement, because uh, of course the first thing every fascist dictator does is relinquish state control uh, of the media. Uh, it's, it's nonsense. Uh, and once again, uh, the Twitter commentary out riled up by certain benches, uh, members of the opposition benches, prove that they are incapable of seeing any debate uh, in sensible or nuanced terms, uh, and instead go for the, the clickbait uh, headline. It's incredibly frustrating. Uh, so I'm pleased to be able to debate this. Uh, today. I agree with my honourable friend from Solihull um, that we should do more of this. There would be less ability uh, to uh, create such hysteria, perhaps, if there was a steady drumbeat of measures from government around privatisation, around driving the private sector, around uh, innovation. Members opposite have said this is ideological. We've heard all the, the practical reasons why uh, it makes sense from ministers and from uh, these benches uh, in many cases. But to me, and I don't speak for government, to me part of it is ideological. I fundamentally believe uh, that the government uh, shouldn't be involved in stuff it doesn't need to be involved in, quite frankly. And if the private sector can drive this kind of innovation and can do this, then it should. And government, uh, if it wants to bring forward more measures to uh, remove its hands from things that it doesn't need to be involved in, then I would welcome that. Perhaps that's a challenge uh, for the minister. Maybe she'll take me uh, up on that one. Um, before I take a more critical viewpoint, it's important to say uh, Channel 4 will continue to play a really important role in British life because it makes some cracking content. Um, I am not as old as my honourable friend uh, from Milton Keynes, but I go back as well. I like Channel 4. I remember the days uh, in the 90s where The Simpsons was on at 6 on a Friday night. I used to sit down after my tea and there was Malcolm in the middle and then I would be allowed to stay up late until friends had finished and that was my bedtime on a Friday night. All American programmes, actually, as it happens, which is probably not uh, the best example before my time, I'm afraid, <laughs> from the Shadow Minister. Um, but I like Channel 4, uh, and they've also recently won the rights to a number of England games, which is uh, only positive to have more of that football on free-to-air, and that should all be celebrated. Uh, but the decision to privatise Channel 4, I think, comes with mutual benefit. In fact, I think it's strongly... Uh, I strongly believe there's more potential for Channel 4 to compete and to make tremendous progress in the private sector. I think state ownership is impractical in the long run. Uh, if the channel is to find investors, to find the cash to grow and expand and to do more, then it needs private enterprise. And we've heard from members uh, on this side already uh, why it is struggling to do that. Uh, and I'll come on to that again in a second. So why continue to limit the growth and the ability of a much-loved TV channel when we can easily uh, sort it out? The questions need to be asked about why running media companies needs to be the role of government. Government ownership has implications. Uh, and though be, uh, through being funded by advertising alone, uh, Channel 4 has uh, a valuation of about 1% of that of Netflix, for example. Channel 4 will clearly need more funding if it's going to compete in an ever-changing and growing market and if it's going to expand. So where's that meant to come from? Its advertising funding is already falling, it can't sell its content as other companies can, its spending is declining. It is limited by government ownership. Members have pointed to good things Channel 4 does, and uh, members opposite uh, have tried to jump to the worst possible conclusions about the risks of all of those things, but there's no reason that those good things can't continue. Words like abolish have been used, but it's not going anywhere. Uh, and I don't believe uh, those kinds of terms are reflective of what's happening. I'll be back to the money. If it's to grow at scale, if it's to take full advantage of the market growth and to be able to compete effectively, uh, the only option currently would be to borrow with that risk underwritten by government. And I don't think that's an option, uh, nor should the taxpayer be asked to do that. Um, takes me back to my earlier point. Does government need to do this or could somebody else do it? The answer is firmly that somebody else could. I will give way. I thank the Honourable Member for giving way. And on the point of money, since its creation, Channel 4 has directly invested £12 billion into the independent production sector. How much does this government estimate that a privatised Channel 4 will invest into our production sector? And if it can't say how much, why is it we're taking this risk? Thank you for that intervention, but you'd have to ask the government, because I'm not in the government. Um, but what I will say is that Channel, uh, Channel 5 is a privately owned public sector broadcaster that invests a higher proportion. Uh, of its revenue into those small um, broadcasting companies, more than Channel 4 does. So clearly there is a model there that can uh, and does currently work. 
Now, the Shadow Minister said that she felt this would stifle growth, this would stifle innovation in British jobs. And as I've said, there are examples already that exist in this country of privately owned public sector broadcasters that do invest in those kinds of businesses, that do support um, our wider media sector uh, and systems here that can work. Uh, so fundamentally to me, as I say, this is a much bigger debate. It's a question about what is the role of the state. If you want best value for taxpayers in terms of not only financial value, but also freedom and choice, then the state shouldn't be in charge. If the state doesn't desperately need to run something for some practical reason as to why this should be the government's job, then it shouldn't run it. And we should approach this issue and others by asking ourselves, does government specifically need to do this? Or actually, could the market do this? Could the private sector do this? Could the third sector do this? Could the community do this. In the case of media, the answer is all of the above. They already do. Uh, and as a council leader, I've started by questioning, do we do things the way uh, we do because it's the best way or because it's the way we've, already, uh, we've always done it? Often it's the latter. And I have found uh, that much more can be achieved through change. I think the state should be prioritising its responsibilities to deliver public services, to create the environment needed for jobs and growth, to tackle the major geopolitical challenges in the world. It shouldn't be running uh, and working in the TV industry. Once upon a time it needed to, it needed to promote choice, it needed to sustain something very new uh, with just a handful of channels and it needed that support, but that couldn't be further from the truth now. Mrs Thatcher set up Channel 4 to promote competition, to create the kind of content that wouldn't otherwise exist. We have com uh, content coming out of our ears, Mr Deputy Speaker, content galore. In fact, you've only got to whack it. Uh, I've got content in my pocket right now. We've got content everywhere. We don't need to be um, putting uh, the state's energy into that kind of, don't ask what kind of content. <laughs> Juicy. Juicy. Um, but there, there is no space uh, anymore uh, for the government to need to do this, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, and to be honest, it's brilliant to see a Conservative government doing what I believe are fundamentally Conservative things. I know um, uh, my honourable friend uh, down, down the other end there uh, from Hereford has, has uh, disagreed. Uh, but certainly my version of this um, is that this sale uh, underpins the kind of conservatism that I believe in, a small state pro-enterprise, uh, pro uh, innovation-focused government that's handing the reins over to the creatives and the innovators in the industry instead of sticking with state control because it's what we've all, always done. Uh, this is a good thing. And as my honourable friend from Solihull said, more of it, please, Minister. I will take uh, much more of it. Um, I think at a time when we want to be proud of our British institutions, let's have faith in Channel 4's ability to compete, release it from state ownership, Mr Deputy Speaker, and allow it to do so.